Uh, wait, that's not the angle you want. Da, da, da. There we go. I think I'm about ready to do this. My sound's working. I have had this box of stuff sitting here for like four days, and things have been absolutely nuts, but I didn't want to open it without my camera recording because I told these nice people I would record a video. Uh, hey, everybody. If you don't know me already, uh, there's a lot of newcomers, so... Um, Hi, I'm Jason. I sit here and repair stuff and I make videos and stuff and this is where I live most of my life. So uh, the reason I'm making this video today is I've got this package that has been sitting here for days and I've been waiting on a free moment to be able to open it. I told these nice people that I would make a video of the contents of this package and uh, to be completely honest, they told me what was in it but I don't, I, I don't remember. So uh, I'm going to open this in front of a camera and... Um, See what we got. So, without any delay here, let's get started. All right, so let's tear this thing open. There we go. Oh, oh, oh wait, we got some customs information on the front of it. We can't do this without reading the customs information, right? Customs information's fun. Uh, this one don't have... Okay, so it just has a commercial invoice on the outside of it. And, uh, all right, this one isn't quite as fun as my last customs paper, so you guys, you're, you're not interested in that. You want to see what's in this box. How are we going to get this open? Let's use a nice sharp razor blade. Jeez. They wrap it in tape? Customs likes to open stuff and snoop through it. Why would you wrap it in tape? I can't count how many phones that I received. They they come opened already, and you can just tell somebody's had their hands all over it looking at stuff. I guess imported phone stuff is getting to be a big deal. Oh, now these people are making me have to work. There better be like a block of gold in here. If it takes me half the day to open it. Come on. By the way, uh, thank you, Alice. Uh, Alice is the one that messaged me and asked me if I would be interested in opening this box of stuff. And I love to get stuff. Okay. So if anybody wants to send me a thermal camera or anything, um, I'll open that in front of a camera. Come on. Hint, hint, hint. Come on, please. All right, here we go. I've got this box of stuff opened here. Let's see. I'm going to pull out the biggest item first because I do remember what this is. This is, is my lighting. I hope this isn't too dim. Whatever. Okay. Um, try this other camera. This is... An iPower Pro by Quan Lee. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I do apologize. I'm going to overlay your logo on top of this video so that everybody is not mistaken as to exactly what this is. So I'm going to go ahead. The big thing with this, okay, the big thing with this is that they say that they have updated or added a chip to the inside of it that's going to make it so that we no longer get reboots. Um, any of you that's been running your phones and stuff at the workbench on these DC squids or DC leads, um, at first I ran through a period of a time where this one that promises, it, it says it actually has, right here, it has original IC written on it right here. It says original IC. Uh, when I first got this one, I had no reboots whatsoever. And then at some point in time, all of a sudden, I started getting reboots again. Uh, so this company here, Quinn Lee, um, Tool Plus, get what, what? What's the other? Hang on, what's the other name of their website here? Let's pull up. Uh, I'm gonna pull up and try to get their information here on my screen so that I'm not giving anybody too little credit. Um, Let's see, this came to me in a message. I'm going to open up their message here. This is all stuff that I should have done before pressing the record button. 
but um, why do anything ahead of time? Why not just do it all at the last minute, right? All right, we're going <laughs> to scroll back here. Yeah, and this package came within three, uh, three days. It's ridiculously fast from China. Okay, that website address is www.geekbar.tools. I want to make sure I'm giving the right company name here. Uh, so anyway, this is supposed to not cause any reboots whenever uh, it's powering an iPhone. So let's do that first. Okay, so let's get this out of the box. Okay. And the first thing we have here is our cool iPower thing. Now, one of the first things I notice is that uh, the old ones, here's my old one. The old one, it's made out of metal, okay? And this new one, doesn't really sound much different to you, but it's made out of plastic. That that probably really does not matter. Um, so it's a little bit lighter feeling, which is probably kind of nice on my supply. It's not hanging so much weight off the front of the supply. Okay. So here is our Tool Plus gadget. Okay, and here is the... What the f fuck? Are you Are you serious? Now, if somebody buys one of these on your website, is this the way you're going to ship it to them? Like it, this has got to be a mistake. Is this a mistake or is this really the way that you guys are shipping these out? What I've got here, let me just I'm going to go ahead and undo this. I mean, I'm going to undo a little bit of it. I'm not going to undo all of it because I, I don't I don't think I have time to solder all this together today. This thing came... Where's my focal point here? I don't think I need to get that too well of focus. This thing came without these soldered onto it. Uh, so to use this, we actually have to solder these onto here. Uh, man... I'm sure that this probably did, does solve some issues, but when I get a tool, if I bought a tool, if I, if I purchased this, I don't know, maybe, maybe on the website it says some assembly required or something, but uh, this is, I, I don't know what to say about this. Like, yeah, I can solder this on and everything, but am I going to solder this all together whenever I'm in, you know, I, 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 I'm in the middle of my repairs, and trust me, I've got, I, I am completely buried in work, okay? I've got tons and tons and tons of work to do. So if I order a new tool and I get it and I open it up and I'm ready to go to work and I pull this out and this is like this, this is going to get tossed to the side and I'm going to use my old tool because I've got to keep things rolling. So uh, I'm sure this is really cool and I'm sure these are probably long, but I'm not going to unwrap them all the way. What I'm going to do for the sake of this video, and I just... You know, on the box, it shows them all soldered together. It shows them all connected. Okay, so the video has been recorded. And as you can see, I did actually make a mistake here. Uh, first of all, this does show on the package the color code. This is the, the colors as to where to solder the wires. VCC is red, of course. Ground is black. Uh, DM is white and DP is green. I know you all like DP. And right here it actually says, let's see, where am I at? My, here we go, right here. In order to avoid unnecessary damage to the wire during transportation, only need to spend one minute to DIY. Thank you for your understanding. So we're going to use the thing that this that came in that box, but I'm going to go ahead and use one of my old leads here. I'm going to pick a phone. Let's grab an iPhone 6S here, okay? That would be this lead here. I'm gonna throw the rest of this aside. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna connect the iPhone 6S to this thingy. And we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the supply, okay? My supply is set at four volts, 3.2 amps.
Okay. Now, I am digging the pile over here. We're going to grab an iPhone 6S. Uh, the iPhone 6S is one that I've had that is just notorious for boot looping and looping when on a DC supply. Okay, this shouldn't have a battery in it. This is my test iPhone 6S. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook this whoops, up to the phone. Okay. okay, so with these, it's really cool. You've got a one button push to power the box itself on. And then you've got this power button over here, which I believe just pumps out five volts to the five volt USB rail. And when you do that, it will cause the phone to boot. Or not. What the? Okay, so maybe this isn't exactly the best screen to be using. Um, let's go ahead and throw a different... Sc the screen was fine! This was fine! What happened? Let's pick, let's, let's pick a better one. Let's pick the best screen. Let's pick the best screen that I have. Okay, let's, let's go with that one. And we're going to connect it up, only the front flex cable. And now... I have to solder together your tool. Are you, are you serious? Come on, man. I won't be doing that today. I got I got too much stuff going on. All right, so I'm going to push the button to prompt to boot. It's not working. Uh, hmm. Okay, we get nothing. Well, as you might have noticed, there is a tiny little tear in my whatchamacallit here. I've got a tiny little... See where am I at? There's a tiny little tear right here. Uh, but I've been using it like that. So okay, well I'll tell you what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna go against what I said. I'm gonna go ahead and solder an iPhone 6 last lead on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna build my tool, okay? So let's go ahead. We're gonna unwrap the cables that came with this thing. Solder together my own tools. Are you serious? Well, that one's kind of cool because it's got the clamps on there. All right, let's grab this one. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I really, really appreciate getting stuff. I, I love to get new tools and stuff. Uh, but one thing that I will never do is I'm not going to receive tools and then lie to my audience about it. I'm going to give a good, honest opinion. So if you're a company that's wanting me wanting to send stuff here for me to, to uh, review, I will happily review it, but it's going to be a, a really, really good, honest review. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this was just maybe a manufacturing error. I just can't imagine that um, somebody would sell these uh, to people and expect them to assemble them on their own. Uh, that's a really good way to wind up with. Um, I don't know if if I do like if I do a long screw damage repair, and I send it back to the customer without the retaining bracket over the screen, like over the screen connections and they're stuck with putting their own retaining bracket back on, guess what happens? It comes back to me for warranty work, and nine times out of 10, it's due to long screw damage again. So I just, I, I would be really worried. Like if I was a company making this stuff, I would be really, really worried about uh, stuff not getting soldered together right and then it getting thrown on you as a non-functional product, okay? And since this thing didn't, I mean, okay, so let's pick through this. And we're going to grab one here. Let's see, this is 6 plus. This is going to be what? X, 7 plus. iPhone 6, 4.7. Here's the 6S and the 6S plus lead. Okay, so we're going to put all this other stuff back together here. And let's see if we can learn how to put this together. Like, I just I don't think anybody's expecting to put together their own, their own tools. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, this would... I guess it's not as bad as going to Walmart and buying like a, a, a toy kitchen or something for your kids and getting it out of the box and having to spend the next two hours putting it together. It's not as bad as that. 
because whenever you buy something from Walmart like that, you're expecting to have to put it together. This is a complete surprise. I was not expecting to have to assemble this tool, okay? So let's see what we've got to do to put this together. I'm going to put this under the microscope. I'm going to turn the microscope on so that you can see it. Okay, let's get it nice and clear. And we're going to be soldering our wires right here onto this. It's Most of it's pretty self-explanatory. We've got, uh, looks like we've got VCC, that's our battery line. Okay, so here we've got VCC, here we've got ground. Now these two middle pins, that, I'm going to be stuck guessing which way to put these. Uh, because there is actually only one wire in the center of this connector. I'm not exactly sure why we have two wires here. Should I just guess at it and hope that it works? Okay. Oh, this is going to be hard because I've only got two hands, you know. All right, let's let's tape the let's tape this thing down to the bench. Okay, we're going to put a piece of tape across it right here. There we go. Now, I suppose I'll take just a tiny bit of flux. Put it on this one, put it on this one, because we know where those two are going to go. We're going to solder our black wire. To the ground. Not really to the ground, but to the ground on here. Well, they were, the, the wires are actually tin, so I'm thankful for that. Okay, so there's our black one on there. <laughs> Very sloppy, I might add. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get our red one on here. There's our red one. Is there any instructions here? Because now I'm stuck with having to guess where these other two pins go. We've got green and white. If I have to guess at it, I'm going to solder the green one to the P and then the white one to the other one. Aha! We got a picture on the back of the box. Yeah, see, I would have guessed it right. Here's the picture on the box. I was going to guess putting the P, put, get all the P on it, getting the green one on the P, and then the white one on the, uh, the DM. Let's get this put together so that I can, uh, so I can finish this. Uh, hmm. All right. So we're going to, we're going to put the green one on the P and the white one on the M. I cannot believe I have to solder together tools. Okay. I don't know, maybe they expected me to do all this. This iron's really not big enough. We're going to use it anyway, right? Maybe they expected me to do all this before I started the video, but that's not the way I do unboxing videos, guys. The stuff that I put out on this channel is going to be really honest. All right, that might be a cold solder joint, but we're going to go ahead and leave it. Oh, I forgot to put the heat shrink on this. Uh, I was supposed to s slide a piece of heat shrink tubing down over the wire before I did this. So I'm not going to backtrack, though. I'm going to go ahead and put it together the way it is, and we're going to use this the way that it is. And maybe later, whenever I go to put together my tool, I'll throw some heat shrink on it. All right. This was a very terrible job at soldering this lead on here. You can laugh if you would like. Um, but now... I have a lead made for an iPhone 6S put on here, but I sat it out on the table, but then I forgot to do it. I know none of you have ever did that, right? You should slide the heat shrink on and then 
put it up over here after you solder it and then shrink it on with the heat but I, I put together my own tool I almost can't believe it all right so let's try this once more okay we're gonna plug this in all right and now since I forgot to put the insulation on it I have to be careful not to let it short against the screen assembly I also have to be careful about these unfinished ends here keep these apart all right And now, we're going to plug this in. Oh, nice pop. Okay, that, that's that's not much nicer feeling than the one I was just trying to use. Okay, so now we've got that plugged in. So I can get my microscope out of the way. Let's do this very carefully. We've got this thing turned on, and now we're going to push the button to prompt a boot. One, two, three, boot. This one works first time. Okay, so the issue that I was having was very likely to be me using my own cable, which I can't possibly take blame for that because I was trying to not have to re not have to assemble my own tool. Okay, we're going to let it boot up. I, for one, one, am all for anything that will prevent phones from shutting off and turning on. Is this my... What's going on here? Do we ever... It's So far it has not booted this phone, and this is a working iPhone 6S. Okay, let's prompt it to boot. And I know I'm not, you know, I'm not shorting against my connections there. I've got, there's plenty of room. Glad I didn't do this live. I thought about doing this live. Any minute. Off, on. All right, she booted, okay? So let's sit this down, and I'm going to try to do this without being too damn careful because you need things to work, okay? So let's go ahead and slide to unlock. I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into settings. Come on. Okay, we don't want to finish setting up the phone. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do display and brightness, and I'm going to set the screen to never go to sleep, which it's already set like that. All right, and we're going to leave this thing on. Just like that for the rest of this for the rest of my little session here, okay? Let's try to scoot this back out of the way. We're going to leave the uh, we're going to leave the settings on the screen so that it will hopefully stay on settings. Let's try to get that ugly screen just out of view there. And uh gosh, there we go. The DC power squid is up and running, but and we got to watch that this don't short on anything because I haven't soldered that together yet. Um, it'll be quite some time before I sit down and solder these on. But when I do, it honestly, it won't take me much time. It's just a little bit of a curveball because I'm not expecting to have to solder together my tools for micro soldering and diagnostics. And it would really piss me off if I ordered a soldering iron and had to solder that together. All right, let's move on. What else do we got in the box here? Um, we've also got these things that are branded geek bar oh this is cool what is this geek bar dot tools okay i think judging by the image this is probably stencils what is this okay this is is it marked I know it's a stencil, but I was just trying to easily identify what board it's for. Okay, this is for an iPhone 5S. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show these to you under the microscope. Oh, cool! They're they're all oh, these these are going to make my life easier. Uh, my stencils have been getting pretty wore down, and um, 
I love to get new stencils. I can't wait to try these out. Okay, so this is an iPhone, this is for an iPhone 5S. Are they marked on the outside? They might be in, marked in Chinese. Um, I'm not, I'm not completely sure there. Okay, the next one that I have here. Maybe if you just open the flap. Okay, this is for an iPhone 6. I'm going to go ahead and pull that one out of the package because I will be using this today. And I really... I really like the feel of these. I don't like that my fingers are slamming them up with fingerprints. Uh, here's about the size of this stencil. It's actually, it's pretty small, uh, but it, it looks to have the most common things that we use. It looks like we have uh, the Mason Touch IC. We've got our audio codec. I believe we may have Cumulus here. We've got a PMIC. Um, these are really, really nice looking stencils. Uh, this is this is stuff that is very, very, very handy. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm leaving this one out of the package because this is going to get used today and we'll never, ever, ever go back in this package. Okay, our next stencil. Gosh, look at... I don't know if I'm going to go through all these. Uh, okay, our next stencils here. I will. I'm going to see what all we got. The next one here, if we open up the flap, this is for... This is for iPhone 6S, and I really like the I really like these square hold stencils. Um, I've always been torn between really cheap thick, uh, really cheap thin stencils and really thick, expensive stencils. These seem to be a cross between the two. They're uh, they're somewhat thin, and I just I like the way they behave. Okay, so our next one's here. This is going to be an iPhone 7 or a 7 Plus. This is iPhone 7. And we've got our our crazy looking Trinity things here, which whichever one of these is is Trinity. That's a tricky little animal Trinity is. Um let's see. iPhone 7. We're going to go ahead. We're going to be leaving the iPhone 7 out of the package. Okay? So let's toss the iPhone 7 aside. And the packaging aside, because it'll never go back in that packaging ever, ever again. The next stencil that I have here, seems like there's like way too many stencils. I can't imagine needing this many different models. Uh, this is for an iPhone 8. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I haven't had to do much in the way of iPhone 8 board repair yet. I haven't done any reballing yet, so I'm going to put this one back in the package. This would probably be a lot easier if I was smaller in Chinese. Okay, so that's back in the package. And also, oops, our phone here running that's supposed to never reboot. It's still running, hasn't rebooted after a little bit of work. Okay, so the next one out of the package here. Is an iPhone 5S. Totally rad. Okay, put our 5S aside. The next one we have, huh? This looks like a 7 Plus, probably. No, iPhone 6. Oops. Wait, do we have multiples? I guess we do. iPhone 6. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm... I'm I'm taking people down the wrong path here just a little bit. Um, 
some of the cheaper stencils I've ordered, you buy you buy the stencil and it's got like every chip on it. Uh, this is the Power Logic stencils for doing those chips. Um, this is the communication baseband stencil for doing those chips. So we're also going to be leaving this one out of the package. I didn't even notice this didn't have baseband on it. I do a lot of searching, no service, iPhone 6 repairs still. So those, that will never go back in the package. Let's set this aside. The next stencil that I have here is for an iPhone 6S. Um, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave that one in the package for just right now. Uh, because the I current iPhone 6S stencil that I'm using, it's not that it's not that bad. Um, I use it not very often, and it's still in really good shape. So I'm going to put that one back in the package. The next stencil we have here is our iPhone 7 communication baseband stencil. That is for sure staying out of the package. So we'll kick that aside. And let's see, what do we have next? The next stencil is for iPhone 8 communication baseband. We're going to leave that in the package for now. Dun, 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 dun. I really like getting all this stuff. I do, I do thank you guys a lot. And also, I haven't said it yet, but the links for all of this is going to be uh, the link to the website where you can buy any of these things are in the description. Uh, here is the A7 CPU and RAM stencil. I'm going to be leaving that in the package. This is all really cool stuff. You guys have got some nice packaging here. Um, so far, I, I love everything here. The only, only thing that I would squawk about is having to solder together the power supply squids. That's... Yeah, okay. Okay. The next one here is the A8 CPU module. For all of you out there crazy enough to try CPU transplants, not me. Maybe for fun, but I'm not going to be transplanting... I'm not going to be transplanting any CPUs for money anytime soon because I actually need money. And if I'm not successful at transplanting the CPU, I don't get to make any money. All right, next stencil on the list it's for the A9 CPU. Ooh. Maybe one day for fun, folks. Maybe one day for fun. Okay. We're going to be leaving all of the CPU stencils in the package. If any of, any of you would like to comment and make fun of me for deciding not to transplant or do any BGA re rework on CPUs for the sake of money, feel free to comment below. All right, we're almost through our pile of stencils here, guys. A10 CPU. Now, I have been watching some of you do A10 CPU rework on YouTube. Um, that's some, been some pretty cool stuff to watch, and it's encouraging to see people that have had some level of success with it. Uh, but to be completely honest, many of the CPU rework videos I've seen, um, they spend a whole lot of time on it and don't end in success. So uh, here's our A10. I love the, this stuff is like a work of art. I, I I love the way these chips look. I love that we've got stencils to work with them. Um, and then this stuff, this is stuff that I will eventually pull out and use. Um, maybe one day when things calm down and I've got more free time to work on stuff that doesn't pay money directly, maybe then. Okay, now we're going to pull out our next stencil. This is probably marked on the outside somewhere. No, they got the same package for all of them. Okay, this one is the A11 CPU stencil. I love it. I absolutely love it. But the thought of being locked down to needing to make that successful in order to feed my kids, it's horrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Uh-oh, people are sending me links. All right, let's set this aside. What do we got here? We've got one left. What's the one we got left? Oh, 
cool NAND stencil for iPhone 6, 8, and 6S. Loving it. That's totally rad. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one out of the package. Okay. Now before I move on to my next set of tools here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do a single reball with these stencils. Uh, I'm going to pick something that I'm very fluent in, something that I'm very, very, very used to so that I don't make myself look like a steaming pile of idiot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick a, let's see, roll the dice, touch IC. Let's, let's reball a quick touch IC. Now, whenever I need a touch IC and I don't have one, what I do is I reach for this little bag over here. Okay. This bag is a bag that I used to drop all my Mason ICs in and my Cumulus ICs in back whenever I thought that you absolutely had to install new ICs. And I'd pull my hair out and just couldn't figure out why touch failure kept resurfacing. Lucky for me, I never ever threw away a single chip. I kept every single IC that I ever pulled and whenever I need an IC, this is where I get them. All right, now since I can't do anything without my pretty blue gloves on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my pretty blue gloves on, which by the way, I purchased these at Walmart. They were $10 for the big box, and now they're like eight bucks for the big box. Love these gloves. Okay, so now I've got my pretty blue gloves on. I'm gonna turn on my cheapo hot air station, which by the way, has been with me now like going on two years. I'm gonna set my temperature to uh, 380 degrees C, and I'm going to use an airflow of 40 out of 100. And let's see if I can pick the nastiest IC in the bunch here. Okay, so we're going to dump out, dump out some ICs. Oh, this looks like a really nasty one. Let's go for that one. Okay. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had to buy Mason ICs, guys, because I've just I have hundreds of them. I went through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of repairs installing new chips, and they didn't need new chips because it was it was the PCB. So, all right, I'm going to put you under the microscope over here, okay? And I'm going to do my normal reball procedure, which, by the way, I still do a bunch of these. Um, I've already done three of these today. I've done a handful of them this week. Oh, this is really nasty looking. All right, let's make this thing look beautiful again. Okay, so I'm going to grab a hold of the chip with my tweezers. Add some fluxy. F Motherfucker. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Look at all the hairs it's got on it. <laughs> all right, let's drag a ball of solder around on this. Okay, I will admit, most of my best ones are gone. The bag's starting to get pretty picked through, so maybe at some point in time here I'll have to, I'll have to break down and buy some chips, but probably not, because I haven't even began taking these off of donor boards yet. We're gonna make this chip beautiful again. That's if there's no deep gouges or anything on the bottom of it. You'll notice I do my reballing off to the side and not on the blue mat. Uh, the blue mat seems to swell, and I know uh, people have told me to put these on paper towels and stuff, but I'm so used to using this part of my workbench, I just continue to use this part of my workbench. Okay, so we've got the chip pretty well cleaned up. Now we're going to grab our new stencil. Um, let's grab iPhone 6. Looks like that has got the mason on it. Gosh, I'm, these are like, my stencils have deep gouges in them. Like, if you look at my iPhone 6 stencil for doing the Mason reballs, let me show you that under the microscope. Okay, here's my, my stencil, and I would normally put that right there under the scope. And as you can see, it's just got tweezer marks all over the place. It's, it's pretty highly used. Now, I'm a creature of habit, so it's going to be really hard to change stencils. Let's see how these new ones do, okay? So, back under the microscope. We're going to lay our, I like the way this feels. Can we do anything to make this? I really like the way this feels. Okay. We're going to add 
Just a tiny... Gosh, I don't even want to put solder paste on them. They're so pretty and new. Let's add a tiny bit of paste. Okay. Yeah, I hope they weren't expecting me to solder together the eye power thing and then do a video. Oh, shit, I got fuzz all over it. Let's go ahead and leave it. Okay. Now we're going to begin warming this up slowly. Now I'm trying hard not to press with the tweezers. Let's see how this warps, okay? I'm slowly warming it up. Are we still in focus? We are sort of in focus. So far it's not warping too easy. I like that. Okay, I see some solder starting to melt. Let's go ahead and roll it from the bottom right corner up to the top left. There we go. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Love that stencil. That is bad to the bone. Normally I can get it to stick right back to the table. Okay, then it's not sticking right back to the table. So if it don't stick right back to the table, I'll just use my blade. And flip it out of there. Okay. I'm going to pick up the chip with my tweezers, give it one last float, and that turned out marvelous. That is a beautifully beautifully free bald mason i see i really like the way that these square holes work i've only got one other square hold stencil and uh, it does really good but it's still the metal for that stencil is really 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 thick and i just i don't like what it takes to actually do uh, do the whole entire process you have to warm it up at a certain way and you got to be so dang careful with that thing to keep it from warping now I imagine once I start using the larger stencils that these are going to do a lot the same um, but I feel like this is sort of a balance between really really thin and really 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 thick clean up my mess here and um, I'm gonna love these stencils. Uh, it's it's small. It's got more of what I need on this specific one. More of what I need on a different specific one. This is going to be really, really, really cool. Thanks, guys. I love these stencils. And if you like these stencils, the link to the website to purchase these is in my description. I'm gonna move on to my next thing here, and I'm gonna put these lovely dudes on my stack of stencils because I need stencils all every day, all the time. All right, let's move on to turn this bright light off. Get it out of my eyes. And by the way, my phone is still sitting here booted. It has not rebooted. Okay, let's move on to the next thing here in the bunch. Okay, what in the name of, what? What are these things? I think these are Measuring, opening, pry. What is this, guys? These are thin, these are going to be thin pry tools. Right? Let's see, we seem to have a bunch of this one. So I'm going to go ahead, let's go ahead and open it. Yeah, this is a really thin metal pry tool. Uh, just to give you an idea of exactly how thin this is, I'm going to put it under the microscope. Okay. 
Also could be handy for measuring stuff under the microscope. Okay, so here it is under the microscope. It's a little big to show it to you under the microscope. Let's see if I can show you the edge of it. Okay, so there's the edge of it under the microscope. And if I put my blade up against it, okay, you can see just how thin that tool is. These are really, really, really thin pry tools. And uh, let's see, we've got a larger one in the package. We've got one, two, okay, they're not all the same. This one's shaped more like that. Uh, this one's more of a star shape. Please forgive me, I don't know exactly what these are for. I think they're opening tools, I, I really do. Okay, and then this one is shaped like a, it's shaped like a triangle and um, perhaps these will be useful for something um, once again if you like this stuff the link to their websites in my description I don't do too much opening of iPads or anything like that anymore um, but I might again in the future and if this is in no way what these are for somebody please correct me because I I, I don't know what these are okay so we're gonna set these aside okay now what else do we got here oh we got iMesa what are these? Is there a whole like strip of them, or what am I seeing here? Huh? Huh? All right. Oh, cool. We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. They actually package these in in strips. Let me show you what these are. Turn you under the microscope here. These are the home button repair thingies for iPhone 7 now to be 100% honest I have been turning away torn home button flexes uh, fixing the iPhone 7 home buttons is not something that I have been doing I have done very little in the way of soldering on those things um, if it winds up being an issue with the torn cable on the flex I typically refer that to another shop but maybe I'll get into this and, and see see what we can do with this this is for iPhone 7 and 7 plus 8 and 8 plus home buttons so apparently they've got the same connectors cool I did not realize that all right let's put this aside now as I was pulling this out I seen a card okay these people actually hand wrote me a card which now I'm gonna feel bad because I had to be honest about the um, DC power squid, um, but I'm going to read this card aloud. I might actually put this back at the beginning of the video. Okay, it says, best wishes. And it says, dear Jason Vilmer, I hope you will like our gifts. And excuse my ugly writing, best wishes, Alice. Alice, your handwriting is awesome. Uh, these tools are awesome. I really, really thank you a lot. And um, there is the contact information for Alice. Okay, so this is totally cool stuff. I am excited. And I feel like a total ass for having to be honest about the the soldering. All right, what do we have next? Okay, we have uh, some packing. Guess what? We are going to be shipping this out today with outbound shipments. Let's toss that over there on the packing bench. All right, now the last tools that I have here in the bunch are some of these, and I totally freaking love these tools. These, this is underfill removing tools, okay? These things are so handy. Uh, the last ones that I got, I wound up, uh, I think I dropped one and damaged it, and I wound up, um, I, I wound up not ordering them or doing anything with them. So, let's see, these... These are for clearing underfill from beneath ICs. I'm going to go ahead and open this package, okay? Oh, 
just pops off the top. Man, I'm an idiot. Okay. Don't want to chop anything off down there now, do we? Now this has a really good, this has a really good feel to it. It's not light, it's sort of heavy, and it just, it has a really good feel to it. Now what is this? Are these all the same blades? Oh, see now that's something I didn't get with the last ones that I received. This is actually three of the exact same blade, okay? This came with three blades, and the blades that we're talking about here They go into the end of this handle and then thread down. And if we look at this under the microscope, it's got sort of an ice skate shaped tip on it. And what that is for is after, let's see, I probably don't, I don't have a good example here. So let's just pretend that this is a board, my blue mat. After you have removed a chip that was underfilled, this is for putty knifing away the remaining underfill. This will go straight across the pads, the underfill, and everything. This is a cleaning tool. It works just like that. It's for cleaning. You add a little heat, and then this tool will raise up and scrape the underfill away. I mean, it's totally awesome. You can see just from me scraping across my mat just now, look at all the crap that I just scraped up and put on the end of this blade. It's a putty knife. It's for cleaning underfill off the boards. And this is a really, really, really handy tool. I'm not going to put both sides on it because I, I don't want to damage these. That's what happened to my last one. I dropped it and bent it over sideways. I had to sit bent over. I really did. All right, so I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to put this with it. This is really cool. I'm excited to have this stuff. Okay, let's get out our next one. This time I'm not going to be such a jackass, and I'm just going to pop... Wait, maybe I am going to be a jackass. No, I'm not going to be a jackass. Oh, definitely a jackass. All right. So this next tool here, it looks like we have 007. Once again, we have three of the same blades. So if you do buy these from these, the, uh, these people, um, you wind up getting several blades with the tool, and that's really handy. So it automatically comes with spare blades. My last one came with a, a sort of an assortment of different blades, and... What this is for, if you are working on an underfilled board, okay, these are 1005 components. They're some of the smallest components there are. And what we do here, I'm going to use a little bit of hot air. And as you can see, this blade is really, really, really small. It's small enough that it will fit between these components. Okay, and we could probably run it. Right down the side here. And what this is for is to make cleaning between and around stuff that is really, really small very easy. Those pieces that just flaked off, that's not this tool's fault. That's because this is a donor board that's been heated up a whole bunch. Uh, but these are really, really, really handy for cleaning between stuff. Um, I love those tools. They work really, really well. And... Um, let's see, the second pack that I open, this is a 007, 007, and I'm going to sit this right over here aside, and I'm going to come back to that and organize this into my tools here in a little while. Uh, the last one that I have here, this one says 009.
And what this has is the same handle, which these handles are really, they feel of a good quality. Okay. Now these blades, these are really handy. This came with a strip. I don't know if you'll be able to see them there. It came with a strip. I'm sorry, my, my equipment's not quite good enough to record this very well. Uh, let me try under the microscope. Turn the light on, that'll probably help. Okay, each one of these blades is a pop-out blade with different shapes on the end. Okay, one of the most favorite shapes that I have came up with are these flat pry blades. These have been very handy for removing underfilled chips. Uh, what I like to do is I actually take, I use my hot air. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pop one of these out to show you what it looks like. I like to use my hot air on these so you actually wind up heating up more of the blade than you do the board because what it allows you to do is you can slide this blade under the chip and just like push it under like a hot knife uh, because the hot air is hitting the blade itself and it allows you to push the blade under the chip and separate the chip from the board because you're always trying not to melt, melt the stuff on the other side of the board. Um, that's, that's always a really, really, really big thing. So uh, these are way cool. Uh, there's an assortment of different blades here. There's all these different shapes. And uh, one of them is a really, uh, one of them is a really, really big one. And then the rest of them are uh, literally just assorted different different shapes and hooks and, and, and different things for, you know, a large part of this job is trying to find tools that are small enough to get around and get under some of this stuff. And these tools are definitely small enough. These are, are way cool. Um, it's awesome. I, I love this stuff. So um, let's see, that is all that I have in this package of stuff today. I guess aside from having to solder these onto the ends of the DC power cable, it's not... You know, it's really not that bad. This isn't the end of the world, um, especially if the tool will allow you to run data backups. Like, whenever I first got... I hope my audio is not humming and doing anything crazy. But when I first got my very first DC power cable thingies, it did not have any sort of circuitry. There wasn't any anything at all other than a straight shot from the lugs on the supply down to the motherboard. Um, this one here, as you can see, I don't know if you can read it or not, but it does say original IC. And whenever I started using this one, I did not have any reboots. Um, and I used this for a long time. I've ran data backups on this. Everything's been fine. But at some point in time, this one started rebooting again. So I don't know if the chip inside it went bad or, you know, uh, or if the software and the phones got updated. I'm not sure at what point that was caused. Uh, but basically, these phones, they need communication with the battery. And without that communication with the battery, some of them, they won't stay on. They'll come up and they'll run for a little bit, and then they'll shut off and turn back on. They'll just spontaneously loop. So I have not been able to run backups using my DC power supply again. And um, I thought, you know, I'm sure it all adds up and it all makes a difference, but when I first got this Siglent power supply, um, it was my understanding that my old cheap junk power supply was causing me issues with reboots because of dirty power. And it was a, it was a switching power supply and you could hear it switching. And I'm just sure it was spitting out dirty power. So that was probably causing me some reboots as well. Um, so here I had this fancy power supply. I've got the DC lead here that's not supposed to cause, you know, that's supposed to solve this looping. And it had went back to looping. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if this Quinn Lee Tool Plus iPower Pro will solve this to where I can go back to running data backups hooked up to DC power again. 
that's totally sweet because I wound up in a situation where I would have to get everything done and ready to run the backup, and then the last thing I would do is connect a charged battery to it, and then I would use that to run a backup. So uh, this looks promising, guys. This has been on, how long have I been recording now? An hour and seven minutes to unbox this little bit of stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to make this an hour and seven minutes long. But this has been running for all this time, and this phone has not rebooted. Uh, touch is still working. It, it's it's up and running. So that's that's really, really promising. Now, for the sake of being fair, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a proper installation on one of these. What if we go ahead, let's go ahead and do one here for the iPhone. Let's do one for the iPhone uh, 6 and 6 Plus. Let's get those on one thing. Um, so to do that... I'm going to take our iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus. We're going to take heat shrink tubing for that one, heat shrink tubing for that one. We're going to set those aside. Okay, let's put the rest of these back in here. Huh? I'm now going to grab an empty one. Okay. This one's empty. So if you do buy these, assuming this was not a manufacturing mistake, it will be necessary to solder these wires on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take me some Kapton tape, and I'm going to tape these down to the table. This stuff has been sitting here for days, and I've just I've been really anxious to open it because I wanted new new power supply stuff here that would be able to run these phones without rebooting. Um, okay, so we've got those taped down to the table. Now the step that I'm an idiot and forgot about before, try not to touch this on anything because I don't want it to reboot this phone. I'm an idiot and forgot about before was to put this heat shrink on here. Okay. So we're going to slide our heat shrink down over one. And so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and slide the heat shrink down over the other one. Okay. Now, gosh, some another set of hands would be really handy. Let's get this under the microscope. Let's do our iPhone 6 first. Okay. There we are. I would really rather prefer this with, prefer to solder this with something that's already got solder on it. I mean, flux in it, like wire solder, but I've only got two hands, so I've got to tape. What I'm doing is I'm tape, I've taped it down to the bench. And I'm going to solder our, almost did it backwards, that would be smooth, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm going to solder our shit, positive one first. Okay, next we're going to solder this DM line on. I don't know why I nitpick.
That to me looks like a not a good solder joint, so we're gonna add a little flux. Heat this once more. I probably shouldn't be using the micro pencil on this. I should probably use something a little bigger. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take that. Okay. Okay, next we're gonna solder the green wire on. It's so hard to do with only having two hands. Okay, we're going to take it. Now, let's go ahead and solder our ground on. Well, the ground seems to have a little bit of tension on it. <laughs> okay, there's our ground on there, and we will take it. Let's see if I can get rid of some of this flux here. Also, no soldering job is complete without a sufficient amount of Q-tip fuzz. Do not laugh at my... Even if a two-year-old could solder better than me, you're not allowed to laugh. Okay, so that is our iPhone 6. Now we're going to slip right over here. We're going to do our 6 Plus. Here. Maybe I can do it a little better since it's now my third time. Okay. Red wire first. I mean, so as you can see, this would take me like a long time to put together all of these. So I'm just putting together the ones I need first. Although, the issue with my other one, using the lead that came with my other set of leads, could have been that tear. So you might very well be able to use your existing leads. Okay, we're going to call that good. Wow, that was so hot. All right, despite being up a little higher than I would like for it to be, it's going to be fine. So let's get our DP in here. I know you all like DP. Yeah, guys, I just can't imagine that a lot of people that are 
ordering this to use them. I just can't imagine them going through this to use them. They would be grateful to have their own their own leads already put together that they could use. Uh, so we're going to leave that just like it is. Let's go ahead and hook up our ground. But now that I've soldered all this together, I will be using this today. And if this is a tool that I use every day, then uh, the link will be in all of my descriptions instead of just under this video. Gosh, are we done yet? I feel like I've been putting together my tool for an hour and 18 minutes. All right, that is a good enough solder joint. Let's go ahead and clean the flux off of it. That is good enough for me. Okay. So now, guys, we have put together our iPhone 6 Plus and iPhone 7, no, iPhone 6 and 6 Plus leads. And only this time, I'm not a fool. Well, I'm still sort of a fool. Uh, but. I did not forget to put the heat shrink tubing on, so now we can slide this heat shrink right on up and over this. Okay. That. Okay. Let's do the same thing on this one. Right on up and over. And then I'm going to use my hot air. to shrink this on. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, and here is what that looks like. It looks a lot like the ones that you buy all put together, only these you have to put them together yourself. Which is not the end of the world. It, it takes you some time, but if it's a good working tool and my phone will run, oops, I hit, I clicked on an option, and my phone will run all day long without rebooting, um, that saves a lot of headaches because when you're doing data recovery, a lot of times you'll be in the middle of a recovery and then that, you know, the one time you get it to boot is the one time you get it to boot. So you get it to boot and you're on DC power and you have to unhook DC power and hook it up to the battery and then you're stuck in an ugly situation where you did have it booting, but now it don't. Uh, so this isn't too bad. And it, all in all, it made for, you know, this is a nice lead. Now when I pull this out, I know this is my lead for the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus all on one cable and it's, it's really not that bad so um, this is good tools here guys I apologize if I've left out any part numbers or uh, any other information that should have been in this video uh, but I'm completely buried and and work so it's very difficult for me to find time to do this type of thing where it's gonna take you know it, it would have been a lot faster just to open the box get the stuff out and, and use it but instead I needed to make a video and um, that's awesome I love making videos okay I'm not I'm not gonna ramble anymore because I have to move on um, guys that is gonna be it for this video I do thank you all for watching and I I will see you next time. Have a good day.